They are blowing whistles to remind President Joseph Kabila of the end of his term. These young Congolese want him to step down. And so they are occupying the streets and mounting barricades to show their anger. We will be out in the streets until he leaves, he tells me. We are not afraid of him and his forces. He's got to go. There was no election as planned this year, and it sparked a political crisis. But the malaise is deeper. We're not here in support of the opposition either, he says. We're here for our own rights. Well, we've seen similar scenes all around the city. People are out in the streets shouting Kabila out, Kabila out, and defying the security forces. There isn't a mass demonstration in the capital because of the heavy security deployment. But we've seen running battles between protesters and police and military forces in many parts of the city. And the threat is ever-present. The security forces are firing live rounds. And they are also sweeping the neighborhoods, making arrests. Earlier on, one of the main opposition leaders, 84-year-old Etienne Chisekedi, posted a video on social media. I launch a solemn appeal to the Congolese people to not recognize the illegal and illegitimate authority of Joseph Kabila and to peacefully resist his coup d'etat. Protests were also reported in other cities across the country. There were demonstrations in Lubumbashi and in Boma, where four people were killed. Mobs attacked the Electoral Commission building and burnt a tribunal in Luebo. Fighting broke out near the airport of Kananga when a local militia attacked the army. Back in Kinshasa, the newly appointed Prime Minister, Sami Badibanga, read a short declaration to the press, but he didn't take any questions. À la jeunesse de ce pays, for the youth, I reiterate my commitment to respond to their expectations and aspirations for the improvement of their own being, and I urge them not to succumb to despair and manipulation. Coming from the opposition, Mr. Badibanga was expelled from his party five years ago. He recently signed a deal with the ruling coalition to accept that President Kabila remain in power. The main roads of the capital were deserted for a second day, but in a city where millions struggle to scrape together their daily necessities, how long can it remain a ghost town? Thomas Fessy, BBC News, Kinshasa.